All right, hello. Uh, it's my first type con, and I'm excited to be here. Uh, I will talk about my class, uh, the special topics class called uh, Post Digital Typography, simply typography of the paper and screen, and its impact as a tool for uh, teaching typography and digital fabrication to undergraduate students, mostly uh, juniors and seniors. Uh, I just finished my third year at App State. Uh, this course was a pilot course, uh, and I offered last last fall, and it's never been offered before. Uh, so I choose to use student work, and then I'm going to share our experience with you. So I always have this question: So how can I combine digital and physical experience for the post digital age? Also, I'm a I love type like every everyone here. So, but also I want to touch typefaces and interact with them physically. So it has been always my question. Uh, I'm a graphic designer. I'm grounded in graphic design. But I'm also an educator and maker. So I've been learning through making and thinking through making, like make, think, repeat. That's basically my uh, theory. Uh, as a part of my research, I've done extensive study on CNC machine, uh, various forms and materials. Many of them are 3D type. So like porcelain, PLA, one of the porcelain, the ceramics, and PLA, some uh, urethane, nylon, even stainless steel. Uh, stainless steel, I have to uh, use some uh, professional printing service. I cannot do that on my own. Uh, most of them are from my DIY 3D printer, even the ceramics. Uh, even this one, uh, I've some, done some tests with soil and glass seed. It's basically the living type. Uh, I also use a laser cut paper. Uh, concrete, and I also use a printer as a lettering machine so you can write something, even with brush. Uh, this was my embosser. I have the sample there, so you can roll it through some blank paper. You can print something. It's my uh, business card. So I share my exploration on my Instagram. Also, universities and other institutions invited me to have a uh, lecture or workshop, but I never introduced my research topic to my students. So I, I wanted to propose a fun, experimental, unconventional typography class using these emerging uh, technologies. Uh, as we have been using uh, digital tools and more and more, uh, there are a few ongoing discourse regarding the term post-digital. And these are, they are a mixture of hopes and concerns between being human or being digital like pen versus machine on analog versus digital. Uh, there are ongoing discourses and practice-based research regarding the term post-digital. However, no one can decide how to define them, define the word, and, and uh, there should be more uh, theoretical discourse and publication. I believe that debate should focus more on the exploration and new uh, exploration of new avenues and possible ways to bridge two different things instead of just separating them. Uh, I define the post-digital typography like this. So post-digital typography is engaged with tangible experience, assisted and or created with various digital controls. Especially the digital fabrication technique will would play a crucial role, role in turning intangible idea into tangible design product with physical substance. Also combined with uh, AR or other uh, AR, VR, AR or VR to restore the healthy tension between analog and digital. Uh, I'm, uh, the, my class was. Uh, con my class has a five to uh, one to five week for practicum, uh, six to eleven weeks uh, type and furniture project, and twelve to sixteen weeks self initiated project. Uh, the practicum includes all the exercise and practice to learn the new software and tools. The first project was student revisited uh, their two dimensional modular type project from the previous type course. We have actually typogra typography one, two, three. So most of them already took type three or in type three. So they revisited the, uh, the project. To, rede to redesign their modular type in three dimensional space, they are asked to incorporate the third, dim third dimension uh, to reconstruct the letter form with modules and uh, reinterpret shapes. For example, there is a dot in a dot or a circle in two dimension. Uh, you can scale it up and down, uh, change the color, apply some pattern, and you can do some other things. For example, what if you pulled into 3D? Uh, 
a circle in two-dimensional two shape could be cylinder on cone shape or half sphere, paraboloid, or some other shape, more complicated shape in, in three dimension. Uh, I asked them to pick a word or a few characters. So this one is one, one of the example. Uh, for example, this one is a good example. Uh, Emily, she, uh, dip, she added different thickness to the stroke and for the uppercase C and lower, lowercase D. Uh, also, there is a bridges between uh, for the C and D, so it was a nice touch to make it printable uh, as a single piece. Uh, students were introduced to Tinkercad on online CAD software because they never touched any CAD so software. To, uh, so I introduced the easiest software. It's running on a web browser. Even you don't have to purchase it. You don't have to download or install it. Uh, this one, it's free, and also uh, it provides various pre-made uh, shapes. So you can also just change some parameters, and then it's going to generate the shape on computer screen. Also, you can import uh, SVG or uh, STL file from other, on other softwares. Uh, using the software, uh, using the Tinkercast as a stepping stone, um, and then Lino uh, 3D was introduced later. Uh, there are different options if you want to use CAD software in your class. Uh, actually, after a few days, one of my students asked me, I like Tinkercad, but it's so limited. Please give me something else. And I introduced Rhino. We have the lab license. So uh, it was easy to use the software, but uh, you can also use uh, or consider other uh, CAD softwares as well. Uh, same module type, but different reserve. Uh, many of them are designed in, uh, designed their module fonts using font struct. Uh, font struct. Uh, if you haven't visited the website, it's pretty, it's worth enough to check it. Uh, it became more sculptural and uh, actually break the uh, incorporate different uh, interesting shapes. It's something like a cube shape. Uh, a, few, a few printable letter form were printed my, with my DIY printer in need uh, 145, 600, uh, 145, 629 lines of code and take a few hours to print that. Uh, the software takes care of the generating G code, which is widely used for computer aided manufacturing, like a CNC 3D printing. To run, the, uh, uh, to run the machine, you need to know, you need to have basic understanding how it's working, or also uh, for safety as well, you need to know how to operate the machine safely. Uh, here are some examples printed letters. Uh, the other example here, too. Uh, the second project with type and furniture, students were given the choice of a table, a, ch a table, a chair, or a bookshelf that is usable in reality. This project asked students to think about the sculptural value of the type and the value of the everyday object in dimensional space. Uh, before we start making the real scale furniture, uh, using the software as a stepping, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, as a warm-up assignment, they were asked to design a prototype of free standing letters with CNC cut plywood, so a student could get a uh, feel of working with the structure and dimension and machine. For example, they used a quarter-inch bit, and then can you see the Sean, S-E-A-N, because the plywood was eight inch. The bit was quarter-inch, so the joiner is not really working. So they need to know and understand how to work with the material and reality and also different dimensions too. Uh, CNC milling machine is cutting something. Uh, it was the, for the warm-up assignment. The department, department purchased a few years ago, but this $10,000 machine was just sitting there for several months. So I asked the department chair and other people, I want to get the training. I want to use it for my class. So I get the training and other things. That's why uh, I could offer this class. Uh, as you can see, the surface is pretty rough because of the choice of the bit. Uh, I'm used this, for this one, I used the upcut bit, so basically it's taking out the material. So that means there's another bit called the downcut. So it's upcut, downcut, so you have to choose the right tool and for the right material too. Also, this one is chip plywood, so that's why it has more rough edges at the top. 
there's various types of tools. I'm not going to go too deep, but uh, they should be used differently. Like we have different printers and different camera, different computer for different jobs. I'm still learning and breaking tools. Uh, this is another $25 bit, and I broke it. And the most expensive one I broke was 70 something dollar. And thankfully, uh, the Thankfully, the department covered the fee, so I don't have to buy another one. But, you know, we're always learning something, and we always break something, too. Uh, based on the experiment uh, from the XR side, they designed the digital mock-up and small-scale prototype and the final product. So this was one of uh, some of the uh, mock-up, digital mock-ups, so like the A swing is really cool, but maybe it's too hard to make it. Uh, actually, it was their final uh, idea. They make a mock-up with the paper and cardboard and make sure it's, it's going to work, it's going to hold the shape, and you can actually sit on it. Uh, they cut the plywood, and actually they made a mistake, which is actually they painted it first. It added extra thickness to the uh, plywood, so actually they, when they try to put them together, it doesn't fit. Actually, as you can see, we just hammered it, and it didn't work. So they have to send it down, the joinery, and put them together eventually, and paint it again. So lesson learned. You shouldn't paint it first, or you need to somehow accommodate that thickness of the paper, uh, paint, I mean, sorry. Uh, actually, they can sit on it during the critique. Uh, this group used a new software called Autodesk Slicer for Fusion 360 uh, to design their uh, table. I showed them a quick demo in class, and this group just nailed it. Uh, this, uh, you can import 3D design, like STL file, stereo lithograph file, um, and literally you can slice it, and you can slice it differently. For example, like M, you can have a diagonal line or the spear, you can slice it differently. You need to play with it. Can you see that some red lines there? That means it's, there is some air or something, or for example, that some part is too thin or it may not hold its shape. So software is going to tell you uh, there is some risk. Uh, even you can get animated instruction. You can export the plan as PDF. Uh, paper prototype and small scale prototype, uh, they made the, uh, another pro two prototypes before they make it big because it's better to fail faster so you don't have to waste the material, waste the time. Uh, it's a real scale, uh, cut the plywood and assemble them together. Although machine does, machine does almost, uh, the machine does a lot of job, but it involves quite a bit of manual labor to complete the process. Project. Actually, they have to send it down and finishing it, paint it, etc. Uh, it's the final product. It's a lean chair. Uh, you can see it on LE and then AN is Ottoman. Uh, actually, it was his first sketch. Can you see? He actually he printed the letter and then actually it's scaling it. Also, as you know, you won't be able to see it like that sketch. We are now really soft enough. Uh, so he cut them, uh, I helped him to cut uh, the plywood, and then he sanded it down nicely. Uh, and then, can you see this, there is some pattern, something like the dog bone shape, it's called dog bone shape, because what you see is what is not, you know, like when we talk about InDesign, it's called WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. But in this case, it is not, because of the beauty is uh, the cylinder shape. So when you cut the straight line, you're going to get the rounded edge. So actually, you have to add it, the corner there, so it's going to fit correctly. So it's not WYSIWYG. So you have to know, also you have to have experience to accommodate that little small changes or some details. Actually, this group, as you can see, they didn't add it the, the the dog bone shape. So what they did, what they need to do is actually they have to send it down every corner to make it fit. Actually, they forced it almost. So it's better to know that. Actually, this it's the uh, during the critique. Uh, last one is a self-initiated project. A uh, student proposed a project that would provide interactive and tangible typographic experience in open space on campus or in the local community. It could be informative, advocative,
playful, cautionary, entertaining, expressive, educative, or transformational. But they should not use a language of hate, bigotry, or anything that could hurt someone else's feeling. Uh, it was the uh, texture typography. Uh, it was installed in the library, and then student can write some message or write some card uh, using the 3D printed card. Uh, this group designed all 26 letters from A to Z, choose uh, some word, and then show that uh, texture, like uh, scary has goosebump there, and L as layer, uh, B as bubble, and fine, F as fine. So they designed all the letters on uh, Rhino, and then they printed it. Actually, this student took my another 3D printing course, so they built their own DIY printer, so that's why they were able to print everything on time, because if you use the library or some other service, you may not be able to print that everything on time. So that's why they were able to do that. Uh, it's a little quick demo. This 3D printed, uh, 3D printed card provide tactile and a visual ex expression uh, experience of the alphabet. So you can write some card, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it's all the letters. Uh, this student incorporate processing sketch and 3D printing to create computed stamp that will show the progression of the processing sketch with color and shape. So here is a processing sketch, and then she picked six frames and then turned it into 3D and then print it with a wood filament, uh, specifically wood-infused PLA filament. And she tested different uh, colors, and then she ended up with this six frames with a different color. So she added some baby powder, powder on it, and then uh, tested different uh, paper, tracing paper, and other color, and other types of paper as well. Here's the reflection. Uh, Every project was challenging in different ways for students and myself. If I can have another opportunity, I like to do it differently, definitely. I, I want to do it better. So first one, uh, studio time and better scheduling because we are only able to do two major projects and then five practicum. F practicum took too much time. It almost took five weeks. So uh, maybe it can be smaller project or one big project. So it, student can do uh, more project in the class. Uh, also, this class focus more too much on making than thinking. So it should be, there should be more thinking and uh, thinking process uh, with uh, some readings as well. Uh, the class was full of troubleshooting and problem solving process. Uh, and I have to deal with everything, like uh, troubleshooting and fixing the print uh, machine and then keep everything on time, schedule everything. So if I can have some help, for technical support, that would be great, but uh, hopefully I can do some team teaching or some other things later. I'll come up with some other solutions. Um, the next one is material fee. Um, it was quite expensive project. For example, the uh, furniture project took uh, one to two hundred dollars, only the uh, plywood fee. If, the, if you choose some nice plywood, it's gonna be easily over hundred dollar. So it could be more group work, or the, another thing will be more practical assignments, like uh, more uh, involved with uh, client-based project. For example, um, maybe my student love to take a challenge to make something like this on, or some other signage or wayfinding system. So student don't uh, student can save some money, and then someone client will gonna pay for the material fee, and then it's gonna have more practical experience in class. Uh, it does not have, uh, also it does not, like other typography courses, because I learned that it does not have to be a whole class to implement this digital fabrication method. It can be split into a small project and then implemented in other graphic design courses or typography courses, because I was so excited to offer a whole class, so I, I was a guinea pig, not just a student. So I wanna try different, uh, I wanna implement this single project to this project to different courses as well. Uh, maybe something like edible type project might be possible later. Uh, you can use the laser uh, on the ham or uh, 
chips, or also you can do some prints, some chocolate. Actually, this one is a Nutella chocolate. It was one of the demo in class to bring some excitement. Uh, actually, we can have it. We can eat them all. So it might be one uh, possibility. Uh, thank you. And I will upload this uh, assignment to the teaching resources website. And I'm going to ha uh, happy to share my experience and then some work. And if you have any questions, please email me or find me on Instagram or uh, Twitter. Thank you.